Welcome back to the studio and welcome to the fourth and final video for this painting. Uh, we're going to finish up this view from Villa Monastero in Verena, Italy. It's right on Lake Como and um, we're going to put the finishing details on today. So let's take a trip back to Lake Como. So here's where we left off in the last video. This is what we have on our painting so far. It's really coming along, but we need to really bring things into focus in this session. So we are so close to finished here. It might not feel like it when you just take a quick glance at the painting, but you're actually quite a bit closer to finish than you would want to believe. It's just all about the details, um, adjusting some contrasts, and really pulling the painting together. So I'm going to use my rigger brush again, my liner brush. I'm going to start to define this building a little bit more. Some of the darker lines on the trim. This brush is great because it just gets down to a very very fine tip. this little balcony here and you don't really need every little detail just need the suggestion of it Continuing on, I'm looking at my reference photo, realizing I left a little a couple shrubs out here. And I decided that I think they'd be really good for the composition. And I'm changing this a little bit. I'm having them come up just above the horizon line here because I don't want them to um, be right against it. It's a point of tangency. I really wouldn't want you want to be either something that's coming forward, you want to either be below it or overlapping it. And uh, so I'm just going to go up there with it. Drop a little sap green in there, just let it bleed a little bit. And it's going to go back in with some of my Payne's Gray, with some of these it's just little tiny details. Sometimes you know what it is in the photograph, they're plants, but you just need a little suggestion of light and dark. So many areas of my paintings like on these manicured shrubs here. Um, I just keep layering over until they just feel right. And I use, I'm using the Payne's Gray here. I like to use that for um, adjusting my dark areas. It's a really nice color to use. Again, just defining a little bit more the direction of the wall here. And right about this point, maybe, uh, you know, in real life, it's about 
36 inches up the wall. It gets a little darker, seems to change direction. So I'm kind of making sure I put that in here. Let's dry this off. Okay, now I'm going to bring you guys in close for I'm um, working with uh, this palm tree here. And I'm, I'm looking over at my reference and but remember, just have to capture the sense of this do not need to get this palm tree exactly. But the tops of these trees, they're, they're never really quite symmetrical. You know, they always kind of lean down a little bit one way. I'm seeing a, a darker cluster here where not a lot of light is getting through. And I'm just using my Payne's Gray mixture for this. And my Raider brush, just keeping it really nice and light. Sometimes you can just give a little flick of the brush. Getting, I know you guys can't see my palette now, but I'm getting a little bit darker paint. Now that these areas are wet, they're, they're very light gray. I want them to be a little darker. So I'm just dropping in. See how that darkens it up? And maybe I'll just drop in a little bit of my sap green. It definitely reads like a dark first, but I want a little hint of green in there. I'm just gonna let it bleed together see how that comes out and then most importantly bringing that dark down the tree gets a little bit thicker up towards the top and I'm just leaving I'm gonna leave that area just gives the it gives us a suggestion that a little bit of light is hitting on that side of the tree. Okay, let's let that dry and see how it looks. Okay, next I'm going to lay in just a, a little wash on the on the back side of this little structure here. First, I'm just going to go in with some fairly clean water because I want to keep this light. I definitely want my viewer to understand that the structure turns there. But I definitely want it to be lighter than this area. So that looks pretty good to me. And then, just as I finish up here, I'm looking off into the distance back in Fumilate. Seeing some buildings back here. Uh, this is a pretty watery mixture of paint. Um, so it's as it's going down, it's looking kind of dark, maybe even too dark. So I'll just go in with a clean part of my paper towel and just lift and soften that. Just bump it up against it. It looks pretty good. One of the other finishing touches 
going to do is go back to my sap green and just in these areas of these, these plants here, I want just a little bit more texture. And again, if that gets too dark on you, just kind of blot up. still on this palm tree. Realizing I wanted this side to have a little bit of tone on it as well, but I want it to be quite light, so I just want to get a little paint on there. Ever things get too dark, um, you can, rather than use the paper towel, you can have more control over where you're lifting the watercolor paint by taking some of the moisture out of your brush and then going back over it. And it's, uh, some people call that a thirsty brush and uh, it just kind of lifts the moisture off the page. All right, so one of the, the final finishing touches here, I'm gonna, pull out some little little bits. Uh, I did not leave the white of the paper. I'm gonna pull that out with gouache. Uh, and gouache is opaque watercolor. Um, it's just a different type of paint consistency and it's, it's meant to be used a little bit more full strength or just with a tiny, tiny bit of water in it. Um, and you can thin it down uh, like regular watercolor. I'm just gonna need a little a little bit here. As I'm looking at my reference, I'm seeing just little areas where the sun is hitting on something and making it nice and light. I'm just going to get a small amount in my brush. There are these little ridges stone wall here. And there's also a little bit of light from inside the building here. Can actually use it a little bit off in the distance, might be a white building or a boat. And it's little touches like this that will really help pull the painting together. And it's particularly helpful for little sparkles in the water. Uh, we tried to leave some of our paper like we've done here, but sometimes just going in with a, a brush with gouache can really help you achieve that effect. One of the last little bits I think that I would do is just to establish a little bit more detail in the water out here. And I do so with this fine brush. 
It's a pretty flat day here. Now I'm just gonna, I'm gonna show you how I do a small portion of it. This is a mixture of Payne's gray and a little bit of green in it. I'm not gonna do a pattern over this whole thing. I'm just gonna do it a few select areas just to kind of suggest the direction of the water and the light dancing off of it. And I wanna keep it fairly light. So it's not the first thing you see. Where it gets closer to the viewer, I'm going to allow those brush strokes to be a little thicker. Might be fun to just include a little bit of blue in this just to cool down that. Maybe doing more of this lower in the painting where it's closer to us and less off in the distance. Be good. Let's see. Just a few more things. Getting the dark portion of these things. It's almost like they're little braces for the wall. Something that the light is hitting. The sun is definitely hitting, causing a little light there. It's not in my photo here, but I think what good in the painting. Just to find these stones, these flat stones, just get a little bit more dark in there. I think that really helps. Okay, when you're done, and I'm deciding I'm done with this painting, I think this looks great. Um, make sure you sign your painting. Uh, for most of my watercolors, I use a uh, finito pen for signing. You use a pit pen, micron, you can sign in pencil. Just make sure that you choose something that is light fast so it's not going to fade. Um, there are a lot of inexpensive, uh, like big pins that will, might feel okay to sign with, but then it's going to disappear in a year or two just being exposed to UV light. Um, so, and sign it so that you can actually read the signature, have it be part of the work. Don't hide it. And most of the time I'm signing lower right, but if the composition were different and all the detail were over here and more of an open area, I could sign it here. It just depends. Uh, but this brings us to the end of this lesson. Um, I hope you guys have enjoyed painting along with me and please let me know if you have any questions. As I mentioned, um, by summer I expect to have um, 
online lessons in either a closed group on Facebook or uh, individual videos that you can purchase. And just keep in touch and uh, I'll let you know more about that as it develops.